Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to use the SUMIF function in Excel and how it can be used to bring a data set of numbers um, together into a report. So for instance, if you don't want to, or if you're not using a system such as Xero or Myob and you are doing your books in Excel, or if you need to just create a quick report out of um, numbers from the bank, um, from your statement lines, or it could be anything, any set of data. But in this example, I'm gonna go through what a CSV file that you may have exported from your bank transactions, how you can use that to uh, create a quick little profit and loss report. So here I've got a CSV export that's been converted into an Excel file and or saved as an Excel file. And it's for the month of October. So we've got our dates down here. Here is the statement details of what comes in the, the bank statement, um, uh, the narration field or the reference field. And here we've got the dollars. The minus sign mean dollars out, dollars out, and a positive number meaning dollars in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little chart of accounts. So I'm just going to go over here a couple of a couple of rows, a couple of columns rather, and we're going to make a chart of accounts here. So what we need to do, we need to create all the different account categories that are going to be used for the profit and loss that we're going to create out of this set of data for the month of October. So the first one will be sales. So the code, we'll have two columns in the chart of accounts. We'll have the code and then the name. Okay. So the first one we're going to have is going to be our sales account. We're going to have that with the code S. And the code can be anything. We're just going to go with one letter codes to make it simple. And going down the list, what else have we got here? Caltex, that's a motor vehicle expense. We've also got I see office works, office supplies. We'll call that O. I see some insurance there. And you can basically build this list as you go. You don't have to do it all at the start right now. So how we could do it is we'd go start putting these codes down using these code numbers here in this column here but it can be any column. But we're gonna go through and put our sales, so we'll copy this and we'll just go invoice 100, $400 coming in, that's a sale. Invoice 105, 600 coming in, that's another sale. And we just go down the list, pick off all the sales and we'll copy using Control V or you can go right click, uh, paste. but I like to use control V. Okay, so that looks like we've got most of our sales there and we're gonna pick off all the motor vehicle items. So we'll go control C or right click copy. And then we'll pick up all the fuel items here for motor vehicle. And I'm going control V to paste. BP. Ampole, that's all fuel expenses going to the motor vehicle account. If we miss any, we can come back to them at the end. Office supplies, control C to copy. So office works, office supplies, stationery and that sort of a thing. Insurance. Control C to copy the I there. And Amy, that's an insurance company, a control V to put the I in there. Um, we've got some legal fees. So we'll create a new code for that.
bookkeeping. We'll create a code for that for accounting. And there was another item down here for accounting. Microsoft will create a code for that for computer expenses. C for computer. And we've got some food expenses here. So this might be travel meals or something like that or catering for a function. We'll just call it F for food. Lunch bar, hub cafe. Now we'll have a look and make sure everything has a code against it, and it does, so that's good. We're happy with our chart of accounts. What you can do also, rather than typing in the code manually, you can set up a drop-down menu, and then you can go in, click your drop-down menu, and select from a set list. And the good thing about doing that is, if you happen to type in the wrong code, for instance, using this way, by typing it in manually, you might not pick everything up if you make a mistake. If you have a drop down list and a defined set of account codes in your chart of accounts, then you can't, it makes it harder to make an error by missing something out or making, um, picking up the wrong item. But for this example, we'll just type it in manually. So you go down your whole list, you code everything up down here to match off with your code list here. Now we're gonna make up a profit and loss. So our first, we're gonna have our income up the top. So we'll just control, control C to copy this, our sales account. And then underneath that, we're gonna have all our expense accounts. So I'm gonna highlight the whole lot, control C to copy, control V to paste. Now what the sum if formula does, it is like the sum function, where if you click down here with the sum function, you can go auto sum it'll add up the whole lot. And then you can click enter to get your total from the whole lot. But what we want to do, we want to sum up only if this item here matches a particular code here. So it's only taking the sum if the code here matches the code here. That's why it's called the sum if. So we want to pick up in this line here, all the sales account items only. Anything that's gone to an S here for sales, anything that's gone to an S here, we want to pick up over here. So we go equals, sum if, open bracket. Now the range, we're going to just, rather than highlight the items here down to row 22, we're gonna select the whole column. That means if you add to this list, it's going to pick it up in the formula and you're not gonna miss anything. So we're just gonna select the whole column by clicking in the column there. So sum if DD, that's the whole of column D, comma, the criteria for sales is the code S. So we're gonna click that, cell G3 comma, the sum range, and the same, we're just gonna select the whole column. Now we're gonna close the bracket and hit enter. 3340, I'm just gonna put a comma, a comma in here and reduce the decimals to make it a bit easier to read. So this is saying, when you add up all the items that have an S in this column here, it adds up to 3340. Now we can check that. If we hold down the control key and select all the items that have S, we're gonna go down the list, holding down the control key the whole time. And then we can see down here, the sum, 3340. And then we can see up here, 3340. So all these items selected here, while we were holding down the control key, is correct. 3340, so we know the formula worked. Now what we can do, we don't have to type out the formula, formula again, we can just go Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. But if we double click on this, it's gonna show us what it's picking up. So we can see 
the blue here, the range is picking up the range column where the codes are, that's correct. We can see the purple here is picking up the sum range the, where the dollar amounts are, that's correct. But we can see here the G5, the red item, is picking up office supplies, not motor vehicle. The reason it's done that is because we've gone control C from sales, then we've gone down two rows and pasted. So it's copied the whole formula down two rows to O rather than M. So we need to change this G5. So you can click in here and go backspace and it would be G4. Or you can just drag here, drag it up to M and then hit enter and motor vehicle 397. And we can do that same check again to make sure we've got everything for 397, clicking on all the M items. Three ninety six eighty seven. Three ninety seven. Or if we put out the decimals, three ninety six eighty seven. So that's correct. And now that we've fixed up the formula here, so motor vehicle is picking up M, we can just drag this down. And you can do some checks here. If you double click on it, we can see this is picking up L. Food is picking up F. They're all picking up the correct codes. Office supplies is picking up O for office supplies. And then another check you can do, if you highlight the whole data set over here, or the, the dollar amounts rather, we can see it adds up to negative 607.27. And if we highlight the sum totals over here, negative 607, and we've, if we push the decimals out, negative 607.27. So we know we haven't missed everything and we know we have picked up all the correct items. If you want to display these as a positive rather than a negative, because in the CSV, the Excel export from your bank account when it's bringing out the transactions as a negative amount because there's money going out of the bank account, you might not want to display it as a negative amount on your report. So if you want to flip negative 397 over to positive 397, all you have to do is put a negative sign in here. But first, we'll just highlight this. Go down here and we can see all the expenses add up to 3947, negative 3947, but we're going to flip them around to positives. So what I'll do, I'll just take a quick screenshot of that. And now we're going to flip these around to positives by putting a negative sign after the equal sign and before the formula. And now that's flipped around to positive 397. We can drag the formula down by clicking, holding and dragging, or you can control C and control V to paste it down as well. It'll do the same thing. And if we highlight this, we can see now it's positive 3947. And if we go back to our screenshot, 3947, so that worked how we wanted it to work. We're happy with that. So now what we can do here is click in here, do an auto sum, or you can go and do it manually, equals sum, open bracket, drag the formula down, close bracket, enter. 3947, might just put a border there, so we can see that's a total. And here we'll do a net figure, so you can just go equals, to do a shortcut, you don't have to do equals every time to start it off for simple functions like an, um, an adding up function. You can just go plus, sales, plus, or rather, I'll start again. So you go total sales minus the total expenses, negative 607, we made a loss for this month. And then you can tidy up and export as a PDF or whatever you need to do. So what we've done here, this is a very basic example, but this could have been a massive list of transactions or any um, kind of data set really. You don't have to be making a profit and loss here. You could be um, 
doing a report based on job codes. If you had like job codes for regions or types of expenses by department or anything like that, you could um, do a sum if to pick up the totals. This is really good for if you're not using a, um, a system such as Zero or Myob, or if the system you're using isn't quite doing, giving you the report that you want for management or for yourself. Um, so then you can bust out the data into Excel and manipulate it there to get the result you need. Manipulating the output, not so much the source of the transactions. Now what we've done here, we've produced a quick profit and loss using the CSV output here from your bank account. It's just picking up the totals of course. If you're regist registered for GST, you will have to make another adjustment. So you could do that within your data set over here before you put it into um, the, the output in the profit and loss by, um, for instance, if we know fuel is um, GST applicable, we can go this item um, times, oh, this item divided by 1.1, that'll take out the GST. And if everything happened down here happened to be GST applicable, you could drag it down, but that won't always be the case. And then you'd be working off your numbers here. And then if you needed to break out the GST component by itself to do a bass, you would just take the difference. So the GST inclusive figure minus the GST exclusive figure, and these would be your GST figures. And then you, you could use that to work out your bass. And from a quick summarize here with the GST collected being positive and the GST paid being negative, we can see that we have a GST refund of $55. So this is, a, a, I guess, a bit of a crude way of doing the, this very quickly for the sake of the, sake of the example. Um, if you were using a template to do your books to um, work out your GST and your bass, etc., you'd set it up a bit a bit better than this, but this is the basic functionality of how it would work. So I'll get rid of that. And that's about it. So SUMIF is a very good formula for taking a big set of data. Uh, once you've set it up, the biggest, the most work you have to do is go down and put your codes in, but that won't take you too long, especially if you're doing copy and pasting, maybe have a drop down menu. Um, but once the basic template is set up, all this side over here is automated. So for instance, if you had um, some more food expenses, we're gonna watch this change. You got food 26 over here. If you had some more food, another food expense, say for $100, and we type in the F for the food code here, this 26 will turn into 126. There you go. So it's all automated like that over this side. As long as you set this side up correctly, this side is automated. But that's pretty much it, guys. You don't have to use SUMIF for accounting only. It can be used for many things. It's a great little quick formula if you like working in Excel to summarize different sets of data into certain categories for any kind of report. Now, if you'd like to book in a training session, we specialize in zero my ob and we do a lot of excel work as well we can come out and teach you how to use any of these programs for your business hit us up in the description there's a link to our website but other than that i hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one